incredible that even more people got worried. After the break, we examine what's going on in this otherwise quiet coastal town. So is the current state of the environment that bad, that there is a slumbering health problem? And many folk considered it a good place to retire. Dave and Sandy Merriweather's kids were asthma sufferers, living up country. It was their doctor who advised them to rather move to the coast. So they relocated here in 1978. And had no problems until industry started growing. Um, and then the respiratory problems started. And also, over the last couple of years, I've been, I'd become a chronic sinus sufferer. Um, I started with asthma, and it's now become chronic. I'm now on medication daily. A lot of my other friends are also asthmatic. Again, these factories shouldn't be so close to residential areas. This bustling harbour town has many more industries now, and despite promises of very strict environmental controls, the pollution just got worse, often from industry close to residential areas. There are days, Dave says, he can hardly breathe. You can smell the sulphur dioxide in the air. But any company that can chuck out 30 tonnes of SO2 into the atmosphere a day, there's, there's something wrong. How can anybody give them a permit to, to operate with that type of emissions? It seems that every year permission is granted for more industries, which increases the pollution rate. When he heard that another large potential polluter, a ferrochrome smelter, was to be built only two kilometres from a residential area, he started a petition and signatures started to roll in. Just over two weeks, we had over 500. It's, it's still going, um, but unfortunately, the record of the decision has been made. It seems that many residents share his concern. The Richards Bay Clean Air Association, the independent organization responsible for monitoring the quality of air in Richards Bay, also objected to the location of the new plant. They have 23 members, made up of various non-government and industry representatives. In principle, absolutely. If Sandy Cumminger, the their public officer, says they have cautioned about air standards for years now. But government officials are doing absolutely nothing with the facts they are given. How bad is the overall air quality in Richards Bay? The air quality in Richards Bay is not good. Um, we have areas where we have significant problems that is borne out by the data that we are producing on a monthly basis. We unfortunately have no legal standing, so we can't do anything from a legal point of view. The emission of pollutants into the atmosphere by industry is regulated by the Air Quality Control Act. Every factory that releases emissions is given a permit to operate within specific parameters. Pollution levels are checked at the source as well as at various points in the area. In Richards Bay, there are five air quality measurement stations strategically situated around known sources of pollution. Quentin Hertz company, EcoServe, runs the monitoring project for the Richards Bay Clean Air Association, which is funded on a polluter pays principle by local industry. Air samples are collected and analyzed on site every five minutes, 24 hours a day. This includes meteorological information, dust particulates, and chemicals such as nitrous and sulfur dioxide. That information is put into a computer database, and then it's fed to what's really the heart of our system, which is this computer model that tells us at any stage where pollution is coming from and uh, where it's going to. This way they can pinpoint a specific culprit. The Richards Bay Clean Air Association Committee passes this information on to the industry responsible for the exceedance as well as the local council who should take action. Instead, Quentin confirms that the number of air pollution complaints have increased dramatically. We're processing on average now about a complaint per day and we've seen that grow fairly sharply since about 2002. We're dealing with around 400 complaints a year at the moment. But Alderman Denny Moffat, the city of Amtlatuzi's mayor, does not believe they have an insurmountable problem yet. I think the main thing that we need to understand is that these are not uncontrolled emissions. Sure, we are, we are worried about the total volume of emissions, but um, Everything is well controlled and organized. In this region, where the unemployment rate is 35%, local government has an unenviable task of balancing environmental health issues with creating jobs. This is why they welcome any new industry. To us, it, uh, it's a, just a marvelous opportunity to uh, broaden our tax base, 
We need to grow further. We need to expand our industrial base further so that it can keep pace with uh, commercial growth and residential growth. But Quentin warns there is also a limit to industrial growth here. Perhaps that threshold has already been reached. A few years ago, the association sent a signal saying we believe that a safe limit to operate at would be half of the health guideline. We don't want to be hitting the health guideline before we start to take action. And we've passed that trigger point. So is the current state of the environment that bad, that there is a slumbering health problem? Dr. Dudley Kelby of the Bay Hospital says it is often difficult to find a direct correlation between pollution well, and chronic illness. My understanding of it is not pollution is not actually causes respiratory problems, but if you have an underlying respiratory disease, it definitely provides the petrol or the or and inflames the whole situation and results in deterioration in those individuals who are predisposed to these type of illnesses. If I go away on leave and I'm away for upwards of two weeks and that, it is an awful lot better. I come back to Richard's Bay and it's just downhill again. Sandy and Dave's previous concerns have been the sulfur dioxide factory emissions. But then they heard that the Tata Steel ferrochrome smelter will be releasing something far more dangerous as well. The dreaded Chrome 6 chemical. A dangerous pollutant that received world attention after the Aaron Brockovich movie was released. And then there's Chrome 6, hexavalent chromium, which, depending on the amounts, can be very harmful. Hey, with repeated exposure to toxic levels, God, anything really from chronic headaches and nosebleeds to respiratory disease, liver failure, heart failure, reproductive failure, bone or organ deterioration, plus, of course, any type of cancer. So that stuff, it kills people. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, Aaron Brockovich couldn't have done very much for your industry. South Africa has had the best history in terms of ferrochrome production. In the 40 years history of ferrochrome production, people have not been identified as coming sick because of their exposure to chromium in a ferrochrome plant. Sondeb Banerjee is the CEO of Tata Steel South Africa. Tata will be investing 650 million in the country and will create 129 direct and 1,000 indirect jobs. They have tried to be open about what they plan to do. How come it took four years then for you to establish yourself here? Yeah, I think it was a question of perception. Because, you know, people go into a mode of fear psychosis sometimes on the basis of insufficient information. So maybe I would say that, you know, we should blame ourselves. Maybe we did not communicate well enough or clearly enough. They will do whatever is required to conform to local health and environmental regulations. He points out that their EIA was in fact done by the CSIR. We are the first organization globally in Chrome business to get ISO 14000 accreditation for an integrated operation involving a mine and a plant. Question is, how much will the plant contribute to the total air pollution picture? The sulfur dioxide emission from this plant is going to be less than 0.01% of the total sulfur dioxide being emitted. Right. So whether this plant is here or not here, it won't change the sulfur dioxide parameters of this place at all. But Dave is far from convinced. Especially on the matter of Chrome 6, the dangerous hexavalent chromium, which the factory will produce. They're going to emit chromium 6, but they say that the amounts are very small. But where do you, where do you draw the line and say, sorry guys, we're just not having chromium 6. It you cannot measure hexavalent chromium. You have to set up a proper protocol in terms of monitoring. and. As an organization, Tata Steel and TSKZN is committed to helping the municipality or any other organization out here who's responsible for it in setting up a protocol for that system. Because this port out here handles more than 2 million tons of ferrochrome. It handles 1 million ton of chromite ore. So there may be enough information in the background which is not being checked at this point of time. Sandy's not convinced either. She says they have seen too many broken promises before, such as after the phosphor expansion. And I mean, that was borne out when they started the new plant and they had the incident and gassed 259 people. Hillside is now causing exceedances of guidelines on a regular basis. And yet when the EIA was done, the CSIR came out and said, oh, everything will be fine. It's not going to be a problem. The exceedances will be few and far between. Now we sit with the problem. Those very same consultants are now telling us that Tata Steel is not going to be a problem. According to a CSIR report, the threat of dangerous levels of Chrome 6 emissions from Tata Steel is indeed unfounded. 
It has claimed you would have a 1 in 1.6 million chance of being affected by something like cancer if you lived at the plant 350 days a year for 35 years. We object to the site that has been allocated to them. They've been moved adjacent to residential areas. They are downwind, which means whatever comes out of their factory is going to be taken by the winds, the prevailing winds, and blown over the residential areas. So then, why the concern of allowing a new industry into town? To say, look, over a month, this is what your SO2 is, doesn't, doesn't show you what the impact is on people's health. You have to look at how many times you're exceeding your short-term averages, which is 10 minutes. And that's what triggers problems in people, especially problems who people who are susceptible. So just how many times do pollution levels exceed the limits in these 10-minute spikes then? Fred Phillips is the city of Amshlatuzi's Director of Community Services and Health. He also sits on the Richards Bay Clean Air Association's board. All air quality emission exceedances are reported to his office for action. Yeah, right now we're picking up SO2 exceedances, but we, we're picking up two or three a month. And these are the, the 10 minute uh, averages that are higher than the, than the national health standards. So if the data reveals there is an exceedance and the culprits are known, it should be relatively easy to prosecute the polluter. After all, it is local bylaws and national laws that are being transgressed. Not so, says Dr. Kelby. That's the weakness in, in the present situation, is there is no regulatory authority which polices pollution, which actually asks the industry to account for, for their action. Denny Moffat agrees that they are worried about the growing total volume of emissions. What is needed, he says, is to clean up existing operations that will create sufficient airspace for even more industries to settle here. We've got to really look at scientific and economically acceptable ways for industry to address these problems. But it is not only industry emissions that are a problem. At the harbour, evidence that supports residents' claims that generally little is done to address environmental and health issues in the area. Dock workers and operators wear no protective masks while chromium is being dumped on the quayside. No effort is made to suppress the chrome dust. Sulphur, spilled onto the quayside, is simply washed into the harbour. They point to the many asbestos-clad buildings in the harbour area. Sulphur also lines the railway tracks and the road verges between the harbour and the industries that use this chemical in their manufacturing processes. Despite confirmed appointments, and numerous attempts to contact him after his office cancelled, KZN MEC for Agriculture and Environmental Affairs, Professor Ndabandaba, was just not available for an interview. We wanted the MEC to clarify his press statement that, and I quote, the decision to go ahead with the Tata Steel project is based on issues other than the environment. We have to balance economic benefits with health issues. The challenge to create jobs is pressing. There is a serious lack of capacity and will to tackle environmental health issues in many towns now. And the quality of life is being eroded. This whilst the constitution guarantees every citizen the right to a clean and healthy environment. The government departments responsible need to come into Riches Bay and start doing their job. They need to start monitoring industries. They need to start assisting with things like a health study, which is their responsibility. I think the politicians have less willpower to even close these industries down that are actually affecting people's health. Without being too rude, I think it's incompetency. And if we as a country are going to satisfy investors who are going to bring foreign direct investment with them to this country, planning matters and environmental matters need to be accelerated. The introduction of the Environment Management Inspectorate, or Green Scorpions, could not have come at a better time, and they will have the teeth to bite really deep. And that, fortunately, is not far off. The National Environmental Management Act has introduced a new licensing system that will see old permits converted to licenses. And in terms of that relicensing of industries, the opportunity to um, deal with uh, repeat offenders and even to prosecute uh, senior management and directors within companies now exists. It's just a question of rolling out that legislation and implementing that system. There appear to be two outstanding issues that threaten to exacerbate this open wound in Richards Bay, the quality of its air. Firstly, how much more industry can this industrial zone accommodate? 
especially in lieu of the fact that commentators across the board have said that Richards Bay suffers from air pollution problems. And secondly, if you're going to accept a new industry such as Tata Steel, which is, let's put it, potentially dangerous, what new and enhanced emission levels are going to be acceptable? Firstly, for industry, in terms of applying for their permit under the new Air Quality Control Act, and secondly, for residents who want to be reassured that they can live a reasonably healthy existence here in this environment. Perhaps the new bill will bring back a fresh new sea breeze to Richards Bay as well.